everyone, Michelle here. Thank you for joining me today at the Creative Cove. Today I thought we'd have some fun painting with watercolor again. It's been a little while and I uh, had a, a viewer ask to do um, some succulents. So I thought we'd do a quick little tutorial on how to paint succulents and turn them into these pretty little cards. So uh, they're a great way to use up scraps. So my first experiment was with uh, some warmer colors. And then I decided to go into some uh, cooler colors just for fun. I'm using up some scrap uh, file folders that I have for the card and uh, just having fun dropping colors into wet on wet at the beginning, which is a really fun technique with watercolor. So grab your paints and your brushes and your papers and your pencil or your pen and uh, let's get started. Okay, so I have my piece of watercolor paper here and I'm just going to do a little uh, sketch of a succulent on here, just for fun, it's just something pretty simple. Um, I don't know what the name of this kind of succulent is because I don't have them, I kill them. I overwater them, I think, and the leaves fall off and then they go brown and they die. So these are the kind of plants I actually don't carry because I murder them. Or things. Uh, just making a little center here and then pulling out these kind of round light bulb shapes and then I'm going to do um, another little piece that comes out from the side here and just very softly drawing what where I think they should go. Um, I would dry, draw a little darker but I don't want all of it to show up in my watercolor. I want this to kind of be like a little soft, soft, delicate type painting. I'm going to do one coming up and out this way, and then maybe one behind it going straight up, and then one coming up on the stem here, and out and back around. Something like that. Um, I think I will make this guy a little bit smaller, just he's a bit big. So he comes up, and then this guy sits in front, and this guy goes around the back. Hmm, don't like that either, that doesn't look right. Let's try that again. So I think I'll have the top of the succulent come out and around and then back in and then have this one come out over top of this one. This would be the top of the succulent there. So you're just kind of sketching along doing your your composition here where you want things to grow, what where you want things to overlap. Do I want one here? Maybe I'll put one at the back. I think I'll put one out here instead. That's coming from down here. <laughs> and I'm just playing. I don't have a succulent in front of me, so I'm just kind of making this up out of my head. So I'm just pretending I know what I'm doing. Like I always do in my videos. Fake it till you make it. <laughs> And then maybe one more coming down this way here. So here's a stem coming out from behind this piece. I'm drawing a little bit darker than I want, but I do hope you can see it. And then another piece coming out here. Let's do one coming out here. And then another one. They just kind of grow from inside these little ends of these stems here. You can go back with your eraser, clean lines up that you don't want. Soften the lines too if you find you want a little bit dark on the pencil, which I feel I have. Let's go down again, clarify this section here, it's a bit messy. And then maybe something over here a bigger one coming off the back end. And then I kind of just look at my overall composition 
see what I like, see what I don't like. Oops. And then pencil marks. And this guy can come out. I think I'll put him to the back. So I'll erase those lines. And then just kind of soften the lines up just a little. So when I go to put the paint on, there we go, just a quick, simple sketch. All right, so now I have my uh, sketch taped down uh, just on a piece of cardstock here. And we're gonna paint. So I've got my number two craft demo paintbrush and my Mei Liang paints. And we're gonna have some fun painting. All right, so I'm gonna pick some greens. I'm not gonna get too much into the color choices here because you can make it a warm green plant, you can make it a cool green plant by choosing various greens and blues. So I'm just going to pick a few colors here. And then I wanna do this kind of drop-in approach. So I wet my brush and I'm going to saturate a part of the plant one of the petals here with the water and where the water is is where I'm going to dip and drop this paint in and I'm gonna let the paint do its little magic here so I'm just dropping it in and I'm gonna let the paint get some hair here or something a fiber of some kind there it is and I grab it. I think I got it. And then I'm just gonna let the paint do its thing by dropping in a few colors. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a cool color here. And then I'm going to move to another one. So the amount of water you add to the section you're painting will kind of uh, determine how the section will dry. So if you're using a big amount of water, like very saturated, then you're kind of going to get these really cool flowy type blendable look to the, pa to the painting. So you can see there's a big puddle of water here and I just dropped that blue in. And what's really fun about watercolors is how the colors can interact with each, with each other um, differently so different colors can repel each other away uh, other colors absorb into other colors sometimes they're more dominant uh, it's there's a real science behind it it's really fun to experiment uh, I never know how these are going to dry in the end but I just love dropping color in it's like a very wet on wet and just kind of seeing what happens and I'm just about always pleasantly surprised. There's very little times where um, I'm kind of disappointed on how it dries. It's just, it's just so much fun to watch this process. So if you don't want the colors to bleed in each segment, then you want to make sure that you wait till it dries before you paint next to it. Because again, wherever you channel that water is where the paint will go. So it's just really relaxing and fun, at least in my opinion it is. And of course you can always do uh, a lift where you're gonna dry your brush off a little bit and then you're gonna run your brush and it absorbs the paint. So you can kind of remove some of that saturation if you want. Uh, you do need a decent brush to do that with uh, something with a natural hair that's absorbent will work. So just, it's called lifting, where you're just kind of removing some of that water and in, and in turn moving some of that paint off. Remember this will dry much lighter than uh, it looks when it's wet. So don't be afraid to add a little bit more saturation to things. If you want them to be a bit richer in color, 
So I'm just going to add a little bit of the blue back in because I want this to be more of a cool color look. Now you can play with the colors as well. You know, you can add browns to this. You can add a different kind of green and go into the more warm tones. There's really no wrong or right. It's just playing with what you like. I'm just going to pull some of that off and add a little bit of yellow in here. All right, let's move on to some other petals. So I'm going to do this one here. And I just like to have fun dropping them in. So I'm wetting that paper and I'm just gonna drop the color in. Maybe a little bit more yellow. And it's just really fun watching the paint react to the water and to other colors. You can do this a few times. If you've got some decent watercolor paper, you can play with this idea a few times and see how see how the paint can absorb and and change as you go so letting it dry in between I mean I'm just gonna add a little bit of yellow to that and then drop in some green so you can see I painted these together so they bleed together over to this one. So these little cards, I like making little cards, little watercolor samples. They're a great way to practice. And they're, you know, they're not overwhelming because they're on these small little pieces of scrap paper. So you're not intimidated by making this massive painting or super big detailed painting. It's more just experimental. Uh, you can learn a lot by doing these little tiny cards or little, they don't even have to be cards, but just little tiny thumbnails. I really enjoy doing them anyways. Let's pull a little bit of that water off. yellow back in here. Okay, so uh, those are pretty wet still. So I'm just going to paint the stem while I'm waiting for the others to dry so that it doesn't bleed too much. Staying away from the wet sides in this case, I'm just adding a soft green. I blended all my colors together there. And now I can go into a little bit more stronger blue. Again, giving myself that space so that they don't touch and get too messy. Just, I do want them separated. some edges here so they start to dry and create these really pretty well I think they're really pretty and soft and delicate which is the look I wanted with this so we can probably saturate a little bit more color into these ones here while they're still wet a little bit deeper concentration of color contrast Oops. Going 
out the lines a little bit. happens. I just love dropping in colors on top of color. I never know 100% what it's going to look like and that to me is just really fun. So I just want to stay away from that edge for a second while it's still wet. too much. <coughs> Excuse me. Still getting over a cold here. So I'm just putting in a little bit of color here while I'm waiting for the rest to dry. This way I find too it's a little bit easier to control your watercolor uh, when you do segments like this as opposed to trying to paint the whole thing. It's, um, it can be pretty challenging to have uh, control over watercolor. That's the nature of it, um, which is why it's so, such a fun thing to use because it's, it's not per unpredictable, but it does have a mind of its own in some way. So uh, controlling your watercolor takes a lot of practice. And then even then you're, you don't have full control, I find anyways. Now, watercolor artists who have been doing it for years know what they're doing obviously and they can they can make uh, pretty good decisions on where to put color in order for it to do what they want of course I'm not saying you can't control it ever I'm just saying it's nature is is hard to control and that's why it's such a fun medium to use at least again in my opinion just going to remove some of this one here. Just to lighten this edge a bit. So I'm lifting the color off. <coughs> I think I'm going to warm it up just a little bit with some raw sienna here. Or is this burnt sienna? I think this is burnt sienna. It's going to mix that into my blues and greens. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, geez, cold season, I guess. I got it in my lungs. It's just <clears throat> took over. I have no idea where I got it from. And I uh, woke up and feeling pretty yucky. All right, so I'm just gonna put in some raw sienna here. Burnt sienna, I believe it is. Sorry. Just to warm up my painting. I like warm colors. I'm drawn to warm colors, even though these blues and yellows that I picked today are pretty cool. I think it's nice to add in a little bit of a warm contrast to it. Kind of change the vibe of the painting by adding in a little bit of warmth. I just kind of drop it in some places. Again, waiting to see what it will do. What reaction it will have with the rest of the colors I've picked. And this is a very nice, relaxing way to approach watercolor is not too much pressure. Just do a little sketch put an effort into the sketch so that the sketch has got details in it and something you can really focus on when you're applying the watercolor and getting if you especially if you want to work on very specific details put them in your sketch take your time doing the drawing and then have fun putting those color oops putting those colors in and again just moving them around seeing what they'll do
So this is wet on dry now. These petals are dry and my paint is wet. So now I'm going to just dab them in. So this is a different technique as opposed to the wet on wet we did. So not tons of detail in my paintings, but enough that you can kind of recognize what it is and play with it a little bit more as you practice. And again, just want to pick up that kind of vibe. So this is more of a, <clears throat> a cooler, cool color combination with a, a warmth, a little bit of warmth. Um, but you can play with, say, like a, a warmer greens, like this one here. This was the first one I did while I was just doodling. So here's some warmer greens that I've picked. And I, I wanted to play with the cooler greens this time. So having fun with your color choices can make a world of difference as well. I'm just going to pick up and remove some of this saturation here just because I feel it's gotten a little bit lost the petals because they were all wet have now blended blended together and I'm losing some of the detail and I want to keep that detail so I'm gonna let that dry for a minute and maybe darken up again so you can cr see it creates these really fun little ridges as well little pockets of blended colors very soft and delicate lots of fun I think uh, I like a little bit of a border color around my edges when I peel the tape off. So I'm going to saturate the corners and the bottom here. And I'm just going to dip a little bit of color in here. It's just the look I like on my watercolors. I like to peel the tape off and see a border. Uh, I don't know why, I just do. I find it has a bit more of a polished look. And I'm just using the same colors I used in the painting around the edges. Some a little more saturated and some a little softer. And again, if too much, you just dip your paper towel. So again, with the water, the more water you use, the more pool, pooled effect it has. Staying away from the petals. Just dipping in that color. Kind of a muted background. But I do like that look. Alright. So we're going to let this dry. Let's see if we want to do anything else to it. Okay, so it's dry now. Let's uh, let's peel the tape off and see our final result here. See if we want to add anything or take anything away. I let this water container out of the way for now. Okay, so usually I reuse my washi tape, but. I didn't this time. So there's our little sketch, which I think is really cute. Now we can splatter it. Uh, we can take a pen to it, which is something I usually like to do, or we can leave it just really delicate like this. I think I'm going to take a pen to it because that's the look I like. And I'm just gonna grab my wagon here. Full of goodies, my ends and my paints and things, and find a little pen. Here we go. So this is a macaron. Oh, I'm stuck on something. Oh, there we go. <laughs> this is a macaron 0.3 archival waterproof ink. Um, so it's it's nice because you can you can reapply water over top and not worry about it. So for me, I'm just going to pull out just a few segments here. I want to kind of maybe separate. That might have got a little muddled in the in the paint wash. Okay, 
and I don't outline everything. I just kind of pull out a little bit of detail, especially in here so you can see how this got washed away because I was too impatient to wait for each segment to dry, but now I can reinforce the details with the pen a little bit. Just kind of visually bring those segments back. You can put texture in here. You can play with something really fun with patterns. You can do all kinds of fun stuff. It's really just depending on the look you're after, the mood you're in, and the materials you have available to you. So there we go, just something that simple. just to pull them out. And even sometimes I like to add a little bit of that black to the outline here, just a little. Reinforce the border just a wee bit. So these are really fun to make these little tiny scraps of watercolor art. Be so bold to say watercolor art, <laughs> but I think it is. I really enjoy playing with watercolor a lot. I'm just gonna erase this pencil line. There we go. And then you can sign it. Don't forget to sign your work. And then I thought we could put it on a card. So do I have a piece cut? thought I did. Yes, here it is. So this is one of these little medical folders. I got a bunch of them from the thrift shop. I have this one too, which I thought was a nice mint green. It could also go really well with that. And this is one of those other medical folders um, with charts and stuff that they would put in them. So you can put it with the brown, mint green, or deep green. So we're going to go deep green because it's already cut and make a little card. So you can adhere this down however you want. You put little photo corners here so that the art piece can come out, which could be kind of fun. Um, I do, I think I'm gonna ink the corners though. I feel like they need a little something. So this is my brushed corduroy distressed oxide ink. I just find a little bit of ink. You could do this with the watercolor as well after you pull the tape off. I think it visually helps separate it just a little bit from the background. I think I'm just gonna double side take this one. Ooh, that's wet. There we go. And do some double sided tape I'm gonna have here. And you can make a bunch of these and then they're succulent, so I thought it would be kind of fun to have a, some sort of fun pun in the card. Uh, my handwriting's atrocious though, so I don't handwrite. I would have to print those off on a computer, but something fun like uh, you're a success, you know? <laughs> I saw that one online, I thought that's perfect. If you're sending it to a friend, you maybe got a new job or something along those lines. There's also, what else did they have? They had, um, uh, you had me at aloe and you can draw a picture of aloe. <laughs> I think they're so cute, just those cute little puns. And just Google them and find something fitting that suits your card and the person you're sending it to. All right, there we go. There's my little card. You can round the corners if you wanted to. And then I want to put just a little something inside, some white paper maybe. That's where you could do, if you want to do a collage, paper collage. And here's some nice dark brown stuff. And you glue a message down just for fun.
bit too dark, maybe. Let's try this one. Just for fun inside the card, a little something unexpected. With a message on it. Or just white paper. I wish I had just white paper, but I don't seem to have any kicking around. There's another piece of watercolor paper. That will work. Let's use that. And then you can put your message on here. So again, just going to add a little double-sided tape. And you can mass produce these sorts of things after you've done a bunch of watercolors. And make these really pretty watercolor cards. And you can come up with all kinds of little pun cards, funny sayings. Fun subject matters. But somebody had requested seeing a uh, watercolor succulent. So I thought I'd kind of combo the two. All right, bear with me. <laughs> All right, there we go. That's somewhere to write the message inside the card. And of course, you can always add a little decoration inside. Because you know I'm never actually fully done. <laughs> <coughs> so you can do just a little mini, just a little mini succulent here just to tie the inside to the outside not too much detail throw in some of that blue some of that yellow that's a lot of yellow And then just your fun caption with your pun in it. You could even do it in the front if you've got nice handwriting. You just put something like, uh, you're a success, but success as in S-U-C-C dash C-E-S-S exclamation point. So a little pun there, <laughs> which I think is adorable. I'm just going to take a little bit of this off so that I can use my marker. You do want to make sure it's dry before you use your pens, otherwise they get ruined. All right, just a little something inside the card that ties it together. And there's our little card with our little watercolor succulent on there. I think it's really cute, very soft, very delicate. And uh, really a pleasure to paint, really fun to paint. Also, I hope that gave you some ideas. I hope you have fun watercolor, uh, experimenting with watercolor, and maybe making your own little personalized line of cards with your watercolor scraps. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me today. Take care. Bye.